Dr. Ajilele, thank you so much for speaking to SNI. How significant, in your view, is today's technology demonstration test? I think this is a very significant thing, both from India's technology demonstration point of view and India's military preparedness point of view. Because from a technology perspective, if you really look at it, there are a lot of issues which are required to be addressed when you do such a complicated test. And for undertaking such a complicated test, it is very essential that you have not only the missile system in place, but the entire mathematics of addressing a moving target, because satellite becomes a moving target, uh, and uh, it's a very small target. Uh, to address a target of this nature, you require to do a lot of things, and I think this is definitely a game changer as far as India's military preparedness in space is concerned. In terms of hitting a moving target, a satellite, you're saying, Dr. Ajilele, uh, just uh, put into perspective our BMD, our ballistic missile defense. Now, there, it, there are two tiers, right? One is within the atmosphere and one is without. And this is probably uh, a modified version of the EXO. Uh, and you see, whenever you are going to undertake a test like this, essentially, you will undertake a test for a lower orbit satellite. Now, this satellite can be at a altitude of around, say, 300 to 400 kilometers to 1,000 kilometers. But when you address a target which is, say, at 800 or 1,000 kilometers, you end up creating a debris, and those debris continue to remain in the outer space. But when you hit a target at around 200 to 300 kilometers, even though the debris are created, owing to the Earth's gravitational attraction, the debris enter into Earth's atmosphere after some time and they get burnt over there. Because the temperatures at that level are almost 2, two to 3,000 degrees Celsius. Uh, so from that point of view, all the other tests which have been done by other countries, particularly the test which was done by China in 2007, was an entirely different test where they had uh, dis uh, disintegrated a satellite at 850 kilometers. So disintegrating a satellite at 300 kilometers, what India has achieved is essentially that it has not added anything into space. So pollution of the space is not being done by India, but at the same time India has demonstrated its capability. Uh, Dr. Lele, when you're talking about uh, one of the primary concerns being that uh, there's very little if, uh, uh, of space debris because of this low altitude uh, or low orbit uh, at, uh, hit on a missile, on a satellite, what are the kind of satellites that uh, would be in that orbit that we can target if the need arises? In low Earth orbit, basically all the satellites which are micro satellites, nano satellites, small and medium satellites are there. From a utility point of view, these are the remote sensing satellites or the spy satellites or reconnaissance satellites or what we call as Earth observation satellites. Because most of the satellites in low Earth orbit try to look at the Earth. So India has got one of the best programs as far as remote sensing satellites are concerned. And that program essentially helps you in identifying land resource, water management, uh, forest management and other related issues. So for all these years, India was using satellite technology for the socio-economic development. Today, India has shown its credentials in military domain too. Uh, so when you're talking about uh, the satellites that are present uh, in this orbit, in this lower orbit, uh, Dr. Lele, uh, in terms of uh, both military or, or um, spy satellites, reconnaissance satellites, uh, give us a little bit more idea of what India could target in terms of uh, enemy satellites if it needs to. Uh, you see, particularly one has to slightly draw parallels from a nuclear domain to a space domain. Uh, as mm -hmm. far as nuclear domain is concerned, when you conduct a nuclear test, essentially what you are trying to do is that you are trying to project your capabilities. So here also nobody is trying to say that we are going to kill a satellite for a foreign country. This is just a capability demonstration which essentially indicates that a deterrence mechanism is there now. If tomorrow India's adversaries say that we can take down an Indian satellite, uh, they will understand that India also can take down their own satellite. So because of these things, neither of the powers will take over each other's satellites. When you're drawing that interesting parallel with the, the nuclear option as well, 
could you take that narrative a bit more how significant is this in comparison to that they're both being called operation shakti though of course uh, you see what happens is that when you do a nuclear test essentially it happens into a nuclear domain uh, in a 21st century when we are talking of a network centric warfare when we are talking of revolution in military affairs when we are talking of using platforms particularly fifth generation aircraft uh, using platforms like modern day submarines but you need to have tremendous dependence on space also all these platforms are space dependent for communication for navigation as well as for getting information that is the reconnaissance part of it so from that point of view you require a satellites now in a military domain uh, so when we are talking of nuclear as a strategic domain now space is also emerged as a strategic domain so in a strategic domain basically you undertake testing to give certain amount of a messaging to your adversary so that's what india did in the nuclear domain so what we did today is in a space domain so the problem of giving deterrence and giving a message to your adversary which india had already done in nuclear thing now india has already successfully done it in the space thing also the reason over here is that india's adversary particularly china has already demonstrated this uh, technology so it was quite obvious that india also needs to demonstrate this technology uh, not only to china but to the rest of the world also that india has got these capabilities and this is the deterrence which is available with us but we are still catching up with china on that front or do you see that moving faster uh, i will not use the word catching up over here because india's missile program has been a successful program for quite some years now uh, we have developed missiles both in cruise missile category as well as in a ballistic missile category we have even developed and successfully tested missiles like agni 5 which are intercontinental ballistic missiles so from that perspective india has already achieved a good amount of a self sufficiency in the missile domain today india just used its technological prudence in a slightly different fashion in terms of message you you are talking about any potential adversaries the message that has gone out there Uh, what about uh, do you visualize any consequences in the past where india has uh, uh, shown its uh, capability in especially in uh, nuclear technology there have been sanctions from the west from the us do you see any consequences of uh, the test uh, you see the beauty of this particular test is that space domain is slightly a emerging domain uh, when we were talking of a nuclear domain already five powers had done their testing all the the rest of the powers in the world have joined hands with them and they have taken a conscious call under the npt that these five powers can hold nuclear weapons and other powers can't in today's domain when we look at space there is no treaty mechanism which india has violated so from that point of view i will say that all the three powers which were having a asat capability today india has also demonstrated that asat capability india has made it clear that it's not violating any international treaties or even bilateral arrangements and now that all flows out from the 1967 outer space treaty itself but technically this is not weaponization of space because there's no weapon that's placed in space you're using a missile to demonstrate your capability of destroying a satellite uh, you see india has been firmly against weaponization of the space for many years and that policy even continues today this is not about putting weapons into the space we are not targeting any target on the surface of the earth by putting weapons into the space we are only making a statement that if somebody wants to destroy our satellite we also have got that sort of the capability so when india again i am trying to draw parallels with nuclear sector when india did a nuclear test india has never said that we are going to use these weapons india has said that these weapons are the weapons for deterrence so today when we did a asat test that is again a weapon of a deterrence going forward uh, in developing this capability is this test all that is required do then do you need to carry out more tests what how do you develop this capability uh, i think uh, we should stop over here because we have demonstrated a capability like in the nuclear sector you need to reinvent the wheel in certain areas because there you are talking of different types of weapons you are talking of tactical nuclear weapons you are talking of other weapons you are talking of different categories of bombs also here that sort of a similarity is not there here you just have developed the capacity 
you have already a fully proven missile launcher today you have just demonstrated it that yes we can take on to any target today the target was a satellite so wo breakfast of uh, dr lede how should india develop this technology further uh, do we need more tests to demonstrate anything to perfect the technology what about other technologies in like uh, fly by test jamming lasers i think uh, particularly when you are talking of a testing part of it today we have demonstrated a capability in a sector of what you can say anti satellite uh, arena of a kinetic field capability uh, one test is sufficient as far as these capabilities are concerned because you just wanted to target a satellite as a target and we have successfully done that uh, as far as other technologies are concerned the laser technologies the jamming technologies and even there are cyber technologies which have been developed by few countries uh, so there is a long way to go in that area and i think india needs to invest into those arenas dr le thank you so much for giving us your perspective here on snai